Well, hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the Scout Prepper channel. So today, a backpack review, and this is a real cool one because I've never owned or reviewed an Everly Stock pack. But what we have here is the Everly Stock Gun Runner H2. Now, don't get confused with the Gun Slinger, which has been very popular in the shooting and military community. The Gun Slinger is a bigger pack. This is their smaller Gun Runner from the hunting line of packs. Yet, as you see, it can still hold an AR with a scope on it and what have you. So, the cool thing about this pack is that it's a very small pack. It's basically just a tube with a, with a uh, scabbard on the back. As you see, there's the gun scabbard permanently attached. There's the pack tube. It's only 1,400 cubic inches of storage on the pack, which is plenty for what I'm using it for. It's in Everly Stock's hunting lineup. I'm using this for my hunting pack for this year. 2016-2017. Got it about two months ago. I've already done a couple of hike arounds at the Deer Leaves with it on just to see how it works. Seems to be fine and I don't have it anywhere near full. I just have a few items in the bottom right now to kind of see how it works. So the pack is in the color Loden, L-O-D-E-N, which is a fancy green basically. It's in basically kind of an OD military green slash brown. It depends on the lighting, but it's a good looking color. I did like it and it's perfect for hunting. They do make it in um, timber veil and rock veil and some of these other hunting camo patterns but those weren't really appropriate to what I thought of as the terrain where I'm hunting in East Texas uh, which is piney woods. I didn't really see anything that I liked. It didn't match the camo I was already wearing. It doesn't have to match. It's not a fashion thing but the load in the green just really appealed to me and it's not very common. In fact, I'll give you a word of warning. If you get this pack Everly Stock makes a lot of accessories they don't make. Most of their pouches for the sides or what have you, they don't make those in Loden. Now, I didn't use any of their pouches, but if that's something you want to do, because they do advertise that the saddlebag goes on well with this molly webbing, things like that. If you're looking to put on some saddlebags and increase the storage space of this, this, and you want it to match, they don't have that. But plenty of stuff works. 511 pouches, Maxpedition pouches, anything with molly compatible. Uh, pal's compatible it'll work on there and it, it, it's working for me so far i really like the pack but again please understand 1400 cubic inches so for hunting it's perfect for some type of get home or bug out bag maybe it's perfect but it is small it would quickly be filled if you started getting crazy in a say a emergency preparedness situation like bug out or something where you're wanting to take a small tent a sleeping bag things like that no way wouldn't work this isn't the pack for you so it's more of just that day pack, that hunting pack. The, they make it in several different color, colors, but this would be great for a tactical pack. If it's something, uh, you know, you guys that have watched the channel for a while know that I have a police background. So if you're thinking of a pack to go in your patrol car, um, like a little go bag or something like that, it also holds your rifle. So this is a great pack. Now, some people, there aren't many reviews on this. There's only two or three on YouTube, but some people that I have seen on some blogs have said, oh, well, the problem with this pack is it won't hold an AR rifle. Wrong. It holds an AR rifle just fine, as you can see. So the scabbard is the pouch in the back. The scabbard, it does hold an AR, but it stops on the pistol grip of the AR. So if you're wanting a pack, to go, uh, that'll hold a rifle all the way down well. Everly Stock makes that, that's their tactical line, and it has the larger tactical, quote, quote, what they call a tactical scabbard on the back, and it holds ARs, including the pistol grip. For me, it wasn't a problem. They also make for 20 something dollars, a pouch that you can put over the end of this uh, to be like a closed off end and it buckles on and now it's sealed this off if you want to totally seal it off say for transport or um, again maybe riding in your patrol car or it's in a uh, some type of air transport that you're doing to a hunt you're about to be dropped to or your ATV ride or what have you so there is an end cap that I don't own but I could get and it is made in Loden so they do make that one in Loden so I could get a matching end cap if I wanted one I didn't this lets my AR go in it lets my AR, my AR come right out so let me show you some of the features first of all this as it says at the top is Maxpedition so this is a little organizer again I'm going to use it for hunting you see the lid there to the pack this holds my flashlight, which is in there. It holds my uh, radio normally, my walkie-talkie, because I hunt normally with my brother about a mile from me. And then I have in here my hunting license, my headlamp, and a little knife sharpener and what have you. So this is my little organizer pouch. I like it on the outside of my bags 
because these are the things that I use on every hunt. On every hunt, I'll have my radio used. On every hunt, I'll have my flashlight generally because, or my headlamp because just in, like in deer hunting, you're gonna go in in the dark probably, you're gonna uh, leave in the evening in the dark, what have you. There's some point of your hunt that you're probably gonna have a light on at some point, even on the trail if, after you've got away from your hunt spot or what have you. So I always use my light, I always use my radio, I use this on the outside of the pack so that we're good to go. So the pack has this lid, you'll see it connected by this strap and it leads to the bottom flap. If you pull this off, you see that this flap would let you do something like a large jacket, something like that across there. Uh, and then you could strap this over and cinch it down. I've got it all the way up, but you could cinch it down and that would hold maybe a large jacket or some other larger item. I'm not using this right now. It also has the Molly webbing on the bottom. I don't have any need for that right this second, but it's there. If you pull this and open the lid, it has uh, the Everly stock logo and all that stuff right there. It has another cross load bearing strap for cinch down stuff. So you could put something longer in here, cinch it down this way, cinch it down this way two ways and that's good. I have on here just a, um, it's either a 511 six by six or it's a Condor, but it's a med pouch and it's on the outside of my pack with a trauma kit, first aid kit, and it's got this red tab that can be stick up for a quick pull. But I have that on the outside with the quick cloth, the tourniquet, all that stuff, because again, I'm in a hunting situation and I'm using a firearm and I have a knife on and all those good things and I'm climbing up in a tree or whatever. So, that works real well for me on the outside of my pack. Even though it's under this, I can just move the lid over and get to it if I had to, or I could pull the buckle and get to the med pouch, or someone else could if they're trying to help me if I've gotten hurt on the trail. So same thing in law enforcement. Uh, you can have some type of uh, organizer here for something you're doing or some type of admin pouch, and then you have a med kit on the outside. I like my med kits on the outside because you don't want to go digging through your pack. If you're bleeding, hurt, sad, distraught, freaking out, crazy, screaming, whatever, or someone else is trying to help you again and you're hurt, they don't want to have to dig through your gear to find where your med kit is. So just like on your tack vest or what have you, your LBE um, or your active shooter bag or what have you as a police officer, just like on that, on my hunting bag, I want my med pouch on the outside. It's a good idea if you're using this for emergencies, for bug out, for you know tornado, disaster relief, hurricane bag, whatever. So. The pouch, I forgot to show you, I'll pull the AR out. The pouch at the top also has a zipper, so you can put things in there. Now in here I have, quite a bit can go in there as you see, but I have the Everly Stock Small uh, Ultralight Rain Cover, and that's up there. Again, that's on the outside. I can, I'm gonna put other things in here like my beef jerky and stuff when I'm hunting, but that's on the outside because if it starts raining, I can quickly pull that out and cover my gear. Uh, so that's good. It is also the whole, when you're looking at this pack, you're wondering what in the heck is this fabric? It's called NT7, NT-7. It's an Everly stock thing as far as I can tell though. It's not, I don't think exclusive to them, maybe it is. Um, but it's real weird. It feels kind of like um, suede is what it feels like. It feels like suede, but it's NT7. It's supposed to be um, extremely resistant to rips. I have not torn it. The pack also doesn't creak under load when you're walking with it like some of the nylons will. It's very quiet. It's super quiet. It's very floppy. It's very flexible. Floppy is the Texas term. Um, as you can see, and it's very quiet. So it's definitely something right out of the hunting world. Whereas Everly Stock may be doing some other fabrics, some uh, Kodura and things like that, some 500D and 1000D on their tactical packs. This NT7 on their hunting lineup is phenomenal. I really like it. And it's built as waterproof, though I haven't stood in the rain with it yet. I have poured a glass of water on it just to see what happened and it beat it right off. It just ran right off. So it didn't soak in at all. Real cool fabric. Okay. On the pack, you'll also see that on the sides, on both sides, uh, trust me, there's the other one. On both sides, you have two little rows of non-standard spaced molly webbing here. So you can get some kind of pack uh, pouch going here. They recommend the three liter uh, saddlebag pouch that they offer, but you can also put something small here. I don't run anything here because it also has two water bottle type pouches and I carry two water bottles when I hunt. So that's perfect for me. I didn't even have to add, as you saw on my 511 pack that I was using last year for hunting, I had to add the 511 H2O carriers on the side and those are 25 bucks a piece. On the Everly stock, it came with it. So it does have the water bottle style cinch pockets on the sides and it has this pretty cool, and I've got it tied up, but it has this pretty cool cinch 
um, a cam lock or what have you so that you can pull this and cinch the pocket down more and then move that. But uh, I, it's fine for me for water and maybe if I was transporting something and had it in there, um, I would cinch it down, but it's good to go for hunting. That's the whole pack except for the mid, the main tube. You see a, a normal spindrift collar here, which can add quite a bit of volume. And in here is not much, okay? It's literally a tube. It's literally a tube. There's nothing in there except for a uh, hydration bladder holder or what have you. You can hang whatever you want from that, but a hydration bladder holder and then a little pocket for that. Now, I'm actually stuffed my rain gear in here during hunting season because I don't carry a hydration bladder, I carry water bottles, but I'll do the rain gear in there and then the main huge tube will be just all my gear, survival kit on the bottom and maybe an emergency bivy and then whatever insulation pieces that I'm not walking with, but I may use when I get to the stand or the blind. Um, food, my I have in there also right now, there's a scope cover. Uh, here is a cord from a flashlight. Kuyu bino harness with loophole binos in there. And then at the bottom, if you can see that, which you probably can't, but there's a bunch of survival gears down in there and it's kind of loose. I'm going to put it all in a dry bag. I was just seeing kind of how much it held when I was hiking around. So that's kind of what I'll use it for. It'll have some survival gear in the bottom. It'll have my uh, insulation layers or what have you that I don't want uh, during the colder weather that I don't want to walk around with. They'll be right here. And then on the very top will be my binos so I can grab those and put those on when I get the right clothes layers situated during my hunt. So really cool pack. I like it. I just dropped the cord into one more pocket, which goes all the way down, full length of the bag, as you can see. It's the whole way down. And uh, I don't know, this would be perfect for a spotting scope or something like that if you walk with a spotting scope or a tripod. So a tripod or spotting scope right down in there, and it's accessible from the outside if the lid isn't on. I will say this as well, by the way, those are the pass-throughs for the either side on the uh, water hose coming out of the bladder. I will say this, you can, if you wanted to, with a deer rifle, you know, a bolt action rifle, an AR, or what have you that's in there, you can unzip this pouch and then stick the stock, stick it over the stock so that this is your top of your pack, see, if that makes sense. So now that your pack will look like that. And this is the built-in top cover over your butt stock of whatever rifle you have or shotgun. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna leave it wide open and I mean, maybe I'll buy the $20 uh, end piece to match, but for now I'm using this top pouch as a top pouch with a rain cover and some jerky or something like that in there. If you flip the bag over, it does have some type of uh, tension to it, like some type of light frame sheet or something in there. I haven't wanted to cut it open to see, but uh, it's a very limp pack. The pack is at all times kind of out of shape and floppy if it's empty. As you see, this material is very supple. It's very... Flimsy, uh, flexible, not flimsy, it's super durable, but it's very soft. I'm used to the tactical stuff that's very stiff and the pack kind of keeps its own shape. This pack does not keep its own shape at all times. It's kind of flopping around unless you have something in it or you have it go ahead and buckle it up or whatever and it hikes just fine. But if you flip it over, you see great, as you would expect from Everly Stock, uh, padded and air weave shoulder straps. The, I saw a guy on YouTube with this pack and he says, oh, the bad thing about this pack is it's not adjustable. Maybe he had the original gun runner and I have the H2, which I do, and maybe that's something they added. But in my H2, it is adjustable. I put it up to the top. You take this off, pull out the straps, walk it down the row of fasteners, put the straps back through with Velcro, and it doesn't explain well for the video camera, but it's real easy once you start doing it. It has dual D-rings on the chest straps. The strap that holds this to the bag runs all the way down it also so that you can adjust as you see by just pulling you can adjust your chest strap which is very good and it's pretty standard but it does have the left side bungee like i like and like you've seen on a lot of the um starting to see in a lot of the packs in the industry i know the eagle and mystery ranch are doing that so that's very cool and it has all the way down it these two huge real padded you see it's taller than my fingers, um, two rib strips right here. And this goes on your back. So now you have this air channel. I didn't get super hot with this, but 
I live in Texas and I was testing this out during the summer, it's super hot anyway. So if I didn't have this pack on, I would be sweating. There's really no way for me to tell how that does until I do some huge hike with it. But this isn't a huge hike pack. This is a small pack and one that you'll enjoy, but one that's meant for the trail, the day, the what have you. Okay, also through here, which I've removed, there's a pocket that goes through here. They had a hip belt that came with it. I didn't like it. It didn't fit me. Uh, I've luckily lost 21 pounds this summer. I'm trying to lose uh, some weight, but I'm right now a 37, 38 inch waist. I was probably a 39 before. Uh, the belt doesn't even get close to fitting. The little tabs, the padding was only about this long. The little tab just kind of went to touch the sides of my, the back sides of my hip, you know, or whatever. It didn't even come around the front of my hip bones. And then it had tons of strap up here, but the padding is only about that long. I don't know what that, that, um, hip belt is. I don't know who designed that. Maybe it's a comical thing, but it wasn't really a hip belt. Although the straps fit up to 44 or 46 inch waist, it'd go way around me and then cinch right, right down. You have strap, nylon strap on you the whole way around your front and around your hips. So that's not comfortable to walk with. I didn't need it. All I'm gonna have in here is my day gear and a rifle at about seven pounds and the pack packs just fine on my back. I didn't need that hip belt. It was just more to stick out. It also lightened the pack a little bit, although this pack is only about three and a half pounds, so it's super lightweight to begin with, but hip belt wasn't for me. Okay, last but not least, you saw that there's the scabbard where your gun goes all the way down that, but if you have a long barreled rifle, like a normal hunting bolt action rifle, 24, 26, or you have some type of longer AR-10, uh, like I'm going to be shooting this year, you can pull that buckle and out comes a little tail, right? And the tail is just the front, the tip area of your scabbard. So it's real cool. You don't have to ha it now let your rifle go all the way down in and it fully protects your rifle even on the bottom. And it's this huge, super thick, rigid uh, quadruple sewed thing at the bottom. So it's real padded if you have a real nice muzzle crown or rifle. And all you do if you're not using it again, there's a pouch right there for it. You can just bend it, stuff it down in there, and then strap it all back together. Now, I didn't stuff it in there very good, but I can do it after the video. Um, and then you strap it down. So you don't have to have the little ducktail sticking down if you don't want to. I don't really want to. It doesn't need to be there on my AR, and it lets me sit on the ATV a little easier because I normally ride an ATV for at least part of my trip to my stand, and then I park and I walk the last mile or the last half mile or what have you. So uh, for me, it's a great pack. Again, it is a little flimsier than I'm looking for as far as flexibility of the material. The pack seems to me to kind of flop around, but when you're walking with it, it doesn't. Just when you're trying to use it afterwards, say you take the pack off, you're in the stand, if you don't have it full, the top, what I'm trying to tell you, the top, even without this pass, see the top is kind of collapsed. It's not rigid and standing open for you. And again, this is a narrow opening, so don't think that huge things are going to go in this pack. If it's wider than the width of the pack, it's not been through the top because the top's the same width, which is good because you know if it'll fit or not, but it is different. Uh, at 179, which is the final part of this pack, it's one of Everly Stock's least expensive packs. At 1,400 cubic inches, it's very versatile, but you get what you pay for it. 179, you've got the Everly Stock Lifetime Guarantee. You have a hell of a pack with some really cool waterproof material. It's well thought out. It was built for hunters. It does a good job of that. It's pretty thought out. It's still modular because it has a little bit of molly on every side, so you could do a little bit of what you're wanting to do here and there to customize it like I have. Uh, so it's a great buy. It's my first Everly Stock pack. Now that I have this one, I can tell you it won't be my last because having that scabbard mounted on the pack lets me go up the tree stand or whatever with my hands free, not having to lug stuff up on a rope later, or not having to juggle a rifle on your right shoulder or what have you with a sling. This is a cool solution and it really works for me. Guys, I appreciate it as always for the views and subscriptions. Keep them coming. And remember, Scout Prepper is uh, channel two of three. I have Scout Tactical for the hunting, uh, the guns and gear, excuse me, and the tactical stuff. I have Scout Prepper, this one on the multi, on the uh, emergency preparedness and uh, multiple different disaster things, camping gear, hiking gear, things like that. And then Scout Hunter has some of our hunting trips, uh, the deer we've got and things like that, and some hunting rifles and what have you, hunting firearms. As always, uh, check us out on the web, scouttactical.com. The new website is coming, I promise. Check us out on social media. Facebook is Scout Tactical, Scout Prepper, and Scout Hunter. 
We're on Instagram under Scout Tactical.